Okay, now before I even get into this next part, um, I want to say I in no way condone or promote any type of drug use, whether it is a drug that has been um, legalized or whether it's one of these more um, category one type of drugs, okay? Um, this is just me sharing my experiences and some of the things that literally help shift my paradigm. Um, again, I know that I have a, a wide spectrum and array of audiences from younger people to older people, different races, different genders, different belief systems. However, it's really important that you use your own discernment, think your own thought, use your own mind to make the decision that's best for you, okay? So I'm not promoting uh, any type of drug use. I'm just sharing what I did and how I did it. Now, um, I'm not going to at all describe the entire experience. I believe that some things that we experience, especially maybe the more supernatural, is just for us to know and hold on to. Not everything is to be shared. So I'm literally just going to give you this brief little snippet of my experience. And this actually came towards the end. So if you didn't get a chance to watch the introduction episode, I told you that my first time trying magic mushrooms, um, I actually got a hold of a medicinal strain that was being used um, in medical research, okay? So I had the top of the line, next level shrooms. And it was my first time. And I was instructed um, by the all that is to take the shrooms and then go to sleep in a pitch, a pitch black room. Um, I remember going on the internet and I couldn't really find anybody else, but I was like, you know, it doesn't matter. This is what I've been instructed to do. I wasn't told to microdose or to do them and go outside and do it with anybody else. I was told nighttime, complete darkness, drink the tea, lay down, go to sleep. Long story short, I ended up drinking two full cups of seven grams of medicinal grade mushrooms. If you know what that means, then you know that is an entirely different mind trip. That is some next level shit. Um, but I'm also able to understand the difference between a hallucination and an out of body experience versus no, I just logged off of whatever this is. So. It wasn't a hallucination, and I know many people would like to say, well, you would just hallucinate. I'm like, no, I know what a hallucination is. Trust me on that one. And I know what an outer body experience is, but I tell people from what I saw, I didn't get out of my body. I got out of this. So I'll just share a little, little, little bit. So after I, I did everything and I, I drank it and I'm laying down, I'm just thinking like, well, maybe she just gave me some bad mushrooms because about 25 minutes had passed and I didn't feel anything. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and go to sleep. So I do that. I lay down and I'm trying to go to sleep and I start to feel something and I say, okay, it must be working. But whenever like I kind of turn on my nightlight and I look around, like my room, my environment is exactly the same as it was. And you know, I know we all have different experiences and different trips when we do like acid, LSD, mushrooms, things like that. But I was expecting for like my room to melt or for me to be flying through like a purple sky with like, I don't know, like little smurfs running around. I just expected for my environment to morph and change, but each time I would open my eyes and look around, like, is this shit working yet? My apartment, my room was the same, and I was like, okay. Then I had to use the bathroom. So as I'm getting up to use the bathroom, I take my arm, my arm and I go to take the covers off of me, and I don't see me as I see me right now. Um, my arm turned into like, um, like green wire frame like it wasn't this it was like I was like a um like how they use an animation how they have wire frame but it was green wire frame and I was fading in and out of the scene so remember 
Nothing about my environment changed. It was just me. That's why I said this wasn't an outer body experience. This was an out of this world experience. I logged off. So after I'm seeing my arm and the rest of my body like like static, like the, the wireframe was like staticky, like it was going in and out. I was like, oh shit. And then I just finally, I just went out like a light. So fast forward towards the end of the experience, what I saw, the best that I can explain it, and it's kind of this shade of blue. I was floating through this light blue environment and it wasn't anything but just a light blue environment. I don't know how else to explain it other than like a glowing blue light, but everything was just blue. And as I'm floating through this um, light blue environment, I start to see these blue quartz clusters. So I'm not sure if you guys know what um, those crystals that you guys use, the quartz crystal use when they're growing, but they grow in a cluster. And what I saw was multiple blue clusters side by side by side by side. And as I was floating through this blue environment and I'm looking at these quartz crystals, I just go, I wonder what that is. And I start to see different objects form out of the crystal. And I noticed whatever I was thinking about would form out of that crystal and then go back. So mind you, this is my first time. I'm not even aware of what's happening. I'm thinking about the stupidest shit. Like in hindsight, I wish I could have went back and thought about something different. But I thought about, okay, boat, car, lion. And like literally whatever I would think of would form out of this quartz crystal and then go back in. And I was just like, wow, this is so neat. Um, I think but by the time I figured out what I was thinking was actually happening, um, I was starting to move on to a different phase of the experience. And I was waking up where I was, but that's where we are going to end. Um, I don't want to share any more than that right now. In this gland, there is floating water, a reservoir of water with crystals that actually have piezoelectric properties. There's also another thing called piezoluminescence. If you have a little lighter and you hit the lighter and then you get that little spark that comes out, that's from a crystal being compressed. And as the crystal is compressed, it releases photons. In your brain, you have these little floating crystals that actually have that quality. And even better than that is there is another characteristic called piezochromism. Piezochromatic crystals are crystals that can release any color of light in the rainbow. Dimethyltryptamine is the main chemical that seems to do this. When DMT is chipped out of a tray that it was synthesized in, you hit it with a screwdriver, bam, you get these big bursts of colored light. Big burst of red, big burst of green, big burst of yellow, big burst of blue. Well, you have these little crystals floating in your brain. So this is from The Science of Getting Rich, which is probably my number two favorite book, right behind the right use of will, healing and evolving the emotional body. I'm gonna read an excerpt from chapter three, and chapter three is called, Is Opportunity Monopolized? The working class may become the master class whenever they begin to do things in a certain way. The law of wealth is the same for them as it is for all others. This they must learn, and they will, and they will remain where they are as long as they continue to do as they do. The individual worker, however, is not held down by the ignorance or the mental uh, slothfulness of his class. He can follow the tide of opportunity to riches, and this book will tell him how. No one is kept in poverty by a shortness of the supply of riches. There is more than enough for all. A palace as large as the Capitol at Washington might be built for every family on earth from the building materials in the U.S. alone. And under an intensive cultivation, this country would produce wool, cotton, linen, and silk enough to cloth, uh, clothe each person in the world finer than Solomon was arrayed in all his glory. Together, with food enough to feed them all luxuriously. The visible supply is practically inexhaustible 
and the visible supply really is inexhaustible. Everything you see on earth is made from one original substance out of which all things proceed. New forms are constantly being made and older ones are dissolving, but all shapes are assumed by one thing. There is no limit to the supply of formless stuff or original substance. The universe is made out of it. But it was not all used in making the universe. The spaces in, through, and between the forms of the visible universe are permeated and filled with the original substance, with the formless stuff, with the raw material of all things. 10,000 times as much has been made might still be made, and even then we should not have exhausted the supply of universal raw material. No man, therefore, is poor because nature is poor or because there is not enough to go around. Nature is an inexhaustible source of riches. The supply will never run short. Okay. Um, yeah. So again, I want to talk about what this formless stuff means and what it means to take form in the mind. Um, there's a great quote by his name is, uh, Reverend Ike. I know some people have their feelings about Reverend Ike, but I was listening to one of his lectures and he said, you know, um, when we talk about the land of earth, he was like, the land is actually in our mind. And I thought that was really, really interesting, but let's just hop back into, um, the pineal gland. And how we were made in his image. And we're also going to go into some reverse engineering. So from the magazine, we were made in his image. And so we make in our image. To understand how we create it, we must reverse engineer ourselves. This is when truth and parallel becomes clearer. The trend of spirituality is re-emerging as the planet moves from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Remember, it is critical to stop using words that we don't understand to describe things that we don't understand. Call this by its proper name and you will gain a proper understanding. What is in the spiritual realm? To me, the spiritual realm is the electrical realm. We can see electricity interact with particles in the air or other objects, but we cannot see electricity itself. Although we cannot see it, we accept in good faith that it is real and exists. So why do many doubt the existence of the spirit world? We cannot see, touch, or feel Wi-Fi but we accept in good faith that it is real and exists and connect to it without a second thought. We cannot see or touch radio waves, but each day millions tune their radios to their favorite stations to listen. The inner space where Wi-Fi and radio waves exist was reverse engineered from our spirit world and operate in very similar ways. Okay, that was just the introduction. Now, 